Ken Winding with Paddle TV and in this video we are talking about how to care for the latex gaskets on your dry suit, dry top, dry pants, any dry wear. Now you spend a lot of money for dry wear and for good reason. It does an incredible job of keeping you dry in cold conditions. But if one of your gaskets fails, your dry wear is wet wear. And so there's some simple things you can do to protect your gaskets from failing. And that's what we're gonna look at. Now there are really two types of gaskets. You've got latex gaskets and you've got neoprene gaskets. Latex gaskets are basically rubber gaskets that around your neck, your uh, wrists and your ankles for some dry uh, pants and dry suits. Now these latex gaskets are by far the driest gaskets but they're also quite tight and some people find them a little uncomfortable. Neoprene gaskets, on the other hand, these are much stretchier, they're much more comfortable, but they definitely don't do the same job of keeping the water out. In fact, dry wear that has neoprene gaskets is typically called semi-dry wear. Whether you have neoprene or latex gaskets, the same rules apply for keeping those gaskets protected and long living. And so let's take a look at how to do that. Now, first off, if you're going to bust a gasket, chances are you're gonna do it when you're putting the gasket on or taking it off. It could be from the gasket just being tired. It's been, it's old, it's dry, it's well used, and it was just, it's time. But more often than not, it's because of something you're wearing. In particular, at the wrists, watches, kill gaskets. If you're wearing a watch, take it off. It may even seem like a smooth watch, but any hard corner or edge, that can be the straw that breaks the camel's back and cause a tear in the gasket. Rings can even do it, so be very careful. Earrings are the culprits for so many torn gaskets. But something else, back in the day, 25 years ago when I was a long-haired paddling dude and I had a ponytail, I'll never forget in the springtime, so excited to get on the water. It was a cold day, putting on the dry top and kapow, feeling of that, the gasket just tearing right open at the neck. And it was all because of an elastic that I had for my ponytail. It had a little bit of hard metal that kept it together and that was enough. So you can't be too careful with gaskets. If you're wearing something, when you're putting the gasket, uh, the, the, the gasket on or off, take any accessory off before you do that and you'll save yourself some headaches. Now the next biggest gasket killer is sunscreen, bug dope, repellent, anything like that. Chemicals that you put on your body but you're also getting on the gasket and it is absolutely amazing how much of a mess that stuff can make of your gaskets over time. It's not gonna be one of those things that you see right away, but if you leave that stuff on your gasket, it can turn it into a gooey, sticky, useless mess. Be very careful using sunscreen and bug dope around your gaskets. If you do, if you are using sunscreen, particular bug repellent for me, oftentimes it's the springtime when I'm using a dry top or a dry suit. It's cold out, but that springtime is also when the bugs are the worst. And so I might be using bug dope. If that's the case, at the end of the day, wash it. Wash your gas gaskets thoroughly with soap and water and then finish up with some 303 protectant. Now, how often do you use the 303 protectant? Well, it's hard to use it too much. It really depends on how much you're using your dry wear. Personally, I might not be the best person when it comes to taking care of my gear. I use this in the spring and then I use it again in the fall, but there's a lot of people that use it much more regularly. It really is up to you. Like I said, you can't really use it too often. You can't clean your gaskets too often. Ideally, especially if you're in salt water, you want, after every time you use it, give it a good rinsing, a washing with fresh water, and then use the 303 protectant to seal it up. Now, the third big killer of gaskets is Mr. Sun. 
Mr. Sun does a lot of damage to gaskets. It does a lot of damage to any of your gear. It, even just the, the material of your dry top, the material of your PFD, your kayaks. If you leave stuff in the sun, the sun will will put a beating on it. Now with gaskets, what it ends up doing is it dries it right out and it ultimately makes it dry, cracked, and it will tear. It'll dramatically reduce the lifespan of a gasket. And that's why higher quality dry wear has typically some type of protective collar around. This one has a neoprene collar around the, the latex gasket so that when I'm wearing it even, it's being covered by it's not getting direct sunlight on it all the time. That's great, but if I'm done paddling, I'm drying this thing out, that's just something to be aware of. Don't, don't store your dry top out in the sun and certainly don't dry it for extended periods in the sun. You will pay the price. 303 protectant, again, will help reduce the impact of the, of the UV uh, light, but sun will do damage. Now, when you get a new dry top or a dry suit, something that's very common is for the latex gaskets to feel very tight, especially around the neck. In fact, the dry top can feel like it's trying to pop your head like a pimple, but that's normal. At least it's normal for the first little bit because latex gaskets do stretch over time. After using it for a full, a couple of days, a full couple of days, it should relax and feel better. But that's not always the case. It will stretch, but it may not stretch enough. There is ways to deal with that, but there's also ways to avoid putting yourself through a couple of days of misery with this thing trying to strangle you, and that's by pre-stretching the gasket. And that's what I've done with this new dry top. This is the new Kokotat Ohm dry top that I just got, and I'm gonna be testing for the first time on the water later today. I threw it on earlier, and it literally tried to strangle me. And so, uh, I decided to try to stretch this gasket out. And I put it over this, just a coffee can in this case, something that's bigger than my neck. And it's been sitting like this for about 24 hours. I'm hoping that it's now stretched enough that I can use it comfortably. If it isn't, well, I'm gonna to have to get a little drastic. <laughs> and what I'm gonna to have to do is actually trim the gasket down. The gasket is shaped like a cone. So when you trim it down, it's becoming wider. That works, but a couple of things to note there, when and if you ever go down the road of trimming a gasket. First of all, trim in small amounts. Trim a little bit, test it. Trim a little bit more, test. And remember, the, the gasket is going to continue to stretch. So don't trim it to the point where you're like, oh, that's perfect, because it's gonna stretch, and now it's not gonna create a great seal. So you want it to be a little too snug in the early days. It will end up being perfect. The other thing about trimming gaskets is you have to be super careful about doing it. You don't want any little nick in the gasket when you're trimming it. It has to be a nice smooth cut all the way around Otherwise, that nick becomes a weak point. And when you're pulling it over your head or pushing your hand through that gasket, that's where it's gonna fail. That's where it's gonna tear. You really, really, really have to be careful when you're trimming a, a gasket. Use very sharp scissors, use, or a very, very sharp knife, like an X-Acto knife. Now, something else that can really help when you're trimming a gasket is to get someone's help. Get them to hold the gasket and apply a bit of tension. Make it a little tight so that it's easier to cut. You're not gonna fold the, the rubber. You're gonna make a nice, smooth, straight cut and you can just slowly work your way around. Now, if you do try cutting the gasket and you totally screw up and ruin the gasket, or if your gasket is just old and it fails, it's ripped, it's torn, it's no more, it's gone. Your dry top or dry suit or dry pants, they're not done. You can get a gasket replaced or you can replace the gasket. You can buy replacement gaskets and do it yourself. You need the gasket, you need some AquaSeal, and you need to watch a 
video. Not this video, because I'm not going to show you how to do that. You need to watch another video, and there are good videos on YouTube that show you how to replace gaskets. The other option, if you're really not comfortable doing that, and you're okay with the idea of being without your, your dry gear for an extended period of time, is you can send that dry top or suit or what have you back to the manufacturer and most paddling gear manufacturers will replace the gaskets for you but it's definitely it's not that complicated you can do it yourself save yourself a lot of money and time so there you have it how to take care of the gaskets on your dry wear if you don't have dry wear and you're going to be paddling in cold conditions save your money and get some dry wear because it is really they're really nice pieces of gear to have and in many situations when the conditions are cold enough or you're paddling further from shore or there's all sorts of conditions where it's not just a nice thing to have it's the safe thing to have hope you enjoyed this video if you did, stay tuned because we got lots more paddling tips, tricks, paddling adventures, and gear views coming your way. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. I'm Ken Wedding, and we'll see you again soon.